Nearly took him over. Nearly. It's What's Nyarly. his nickname? What's his nickname? I don't think he really gets a nickname. He tends to eat people who call him by a nickname. Oh, okay. Hi, folks. John Dunn, RPG freelancer and publisher of Meliorvia here at Immortals, Inc. Once more, talking RPGs. And, you know, I'm here, so there's a pretty good chance we're going to talk about something Cthulhu-related. And if he's here, you know I'm here. So I'm ready to talk about something Cthulhu-related. What do you got for me? Well, thanks for being on the boards, Mike. Appreciate that. You know it. Today, I wanted to talk about Masks of Nyarlathotep. Those who have been following Immortals, Inc.'s YouTube presence for a while may remember I've been running a campaign up at the store here. I think it's got 50-odd episodes out there, and uh, we kind of paused that for COVID. We're hoping we'll get back to it eventually. They're still up, too. You can go check them out. Until then, some people may be interested in checking out the source material for themselves. And these two books are sold as part of a big slipcase from Chaosium as the Masks of Nyarlathotep campaign. And as you can see... These are hefty books. There is a whole lot of stuff in them. And they are not two separate adventures. They are one big campaign where player characters get to go all over the globe in the 1920s fighting cultists who are following the Cthulhu deity masks, or the Cthulhu deity Nyarlathotep, part of Lovecraft's mythos. Um, a little bit about the name, Masks of Nyarlathotep. The masks are basically different manifestations of this entity, this cosmic being. Uh, and he's believed to have thousands of different masks. And each of those different masks spawn their own following, their own cults. And as the player characters go through this campaign, they encounter different cults that follow different manifestations of Nyarlathotep, the different masks. And... So with each of those masks, the cults that spring up around them are a bit different. They have different beliefs. They draw on different kinds of people. Those people have different responses and different traditions. So that's interesting you say that because the photo behind you, obviously, I'm sure you've seen it, the little reference to the page, the cover page. Is that one of his different masks? It is. I believe that's the God of the Bloody Tongue. Oh, and then those people around him are the cultists, I believe? Or Absolutely. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're partying around a pyramid there. Look at them. They're all proud. They're following him. Yes, they are. So this is a pretty well-respected campaign. This is one that was originally published back in late 70s, early 80s, written by a guy by the name of Larry Dottilio. And Larry, this is the only thing he ever wrote for role-playing games. He actually, after he did this, said, I can make real money and went into TV. In the decades since then, Chaosium has done multiple printings of it, multiple revisions, multiple expansions of it. And this is really the heftiest version that they've ever published. Uh, in one of the earlier iterations, they added a whole side trip where the players go to Australia. In this one, they added a whole side trip where the players go to Peru. It really builds on that whole globe trotting element of it as the campaign has grown. Uh, one of the other things that people like to talk about when they talk about Cthulhu is how true is it to Lovecraft's mythos? How much are the characters, you know, these academic types that are quietly going insane uh, and librarians? This is less that because the characters are really a little bit more pulp action heroes because they're going to be traveling all over the globe and fighting cultists and sometimes you know, resorting to actual hand-to-hand -hand actions because that's the only way they can possibly defeat them in their numbers. So that changes the tone a little bit. The other things I wanted to talk about is all the different globe trotting. So the campaign's intended to start out in Peru where the player characters meet a shared, a man who will become a good friend of theirs. And then they later meet him again in New York City several years later which is where the campaign really kicks into high gear. Uh, and after that, they travel at their discretion to a number of different locations. This book contains Peru, New York, London, and Egypt. And then this guy over here has the remainder of the campaign, which is Kenya, Australia, China, and the final conclusions along with some appendices. Oh, so that answers my that answered my question. I was basically going to ask, do you have to start on one book particularly? But yeah, that first cover is volume one, right? That's the first Pretty one. much, yeah. So the first one, you're going to be in Peru because that's kind of the prologue. And then things really start off when you hit New York. But after New York, you can kind of do other things in whatever order player characters choose to. And there's a lot of different options 
This is a long campaign. Uh, I think I mentioned I ran about 50 sessions of it and we were maybe two thirds, three quarters of the way through. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things in the main quest line. And then there's a lot of different side quests. So you wait, you ran 50 of these and you weren't, you weren't even done with it yet? No, no. We were, like I said, about, about two thirds of the way through it. Yeah, that's meaty. For there's sure. a lot of content in here. Uh, when you pick this up, it comes in a slip case, like I said, and sandwiched in between these two books is a whole mess of handouts. So you don't have to cut up your books if the players want to get a hand on it. Uh, and this is a Chaosium product, and I think this is part of the Bits and Mortar deal. So if you buy it here at Immortals Inc., you can then contact Bits and Mortar and they'll send you a PDF version of it, which is also another great way to get a hold of all those handouts if you want to run it multiple times. And there are a lot of different resources for masks out there. There are various social media groups dedicated to it. There are books that have been published entirely with advice for how to run this campaign. A lot of the material has been incorporated back into these books with this newer iteration of it. But there's plenty of stuff out there and plenty of resources for somebody who's thinking about running it to just reach out and go, Hey, can I find just the right bit to leverage off what my players did here or ooh, here's another hint that I can drop and get the players back on track or send them off in another interesting direction or maybe here's a way I can introduce a new player character after <laughs> something went horribly wrong for the investigators during an adventure. I was wondering would they ever make just one book out of the two volumes? Why have they never thought of that? <laughs> so originally it was just one volume and as the books grew and grew, it became more practical to split them up. The main reason for splitting them up is just once a book reaches a certain number of pages, it tends to fall apart as you flip uh, through it. It's a quality and issue. And it also tends to be real heavy when you're hauling <laughs> it around. <laughs> the Bible. The, the exactly. The Yarlath Doteb Bible. And let me tell you, when I was hauling my stuff up here to run the game, uh, if I knew the players were only going to be adventuring in one of these books... I didn't bring the other one with me. I did mention there's a lot of other resources. One that's amazingly cool for this is published by the HP Lovecraft Historical Society. And that's just a box of handouts, which I used when I was running the campaign here. And those handouts are high quality ones that are produced on authentic newspaper prints so that you can hand the players actual newspaper articles with ads that are appropriate to it. Uh, there's a memory stick in there with some MP3 files so that you've got voice actors doing different recordings that appear in the stories. There's high quality maps. Now, don't let me take away from any of what's here. There's some great stuff here and it's a heck of a campaign with an amazing amount of resources, but just know that there are other materials out there that you can dive into if you really want to expand on it. Uh, this is a campaign that I would encourage anyone who is really into the Cthulhu Mythos to learn about and to either try to play or run because it really is one of the iconic adventures for anyone who's deeply into Cthulhu. And someone like me who's a beginner for these RPGs, you think I could jump right into something like this with the right um, guide, might you say? With the right group, you could definitely jump into it. And let me tell you, once you've experienced it, there's no looking back. You're going to be up to your ears in it in no time because you're going to love it. Uh, check out those other videos like I mentioned on the Immortals Inc. YouTube page and make sure to like and subscribe. And make sure you guys stay up to date. These are discussions with uh, John Dunn and Mikey and myself and these will be regularly uploaded every week along with our reviews with me and Carlos and a bunch of other videos. So yeah, thank you guys for the support. 